Yo, crazy diabolical work, y'all. It's it you gotta be careful. Right now, we're gonna get into how a BK Lobster CEO accused of stealing from his franchisees. Uh, and of course, you know, uh the shade room is a very credible source. Let's look. Let's just jump right into it, man. I'm going to give you my thoughts on the entire situation. You know how we do. We just got scared. That something fishy was going on. $46,000. $100,000. I lost upward of $300,000. BK Lobster, the seafood franchise dozens of people invested in. Look, <laughs> I'm sorry. We only 13 seconds in. That's a That's a hell of a start. If I put $300,000 into a franchise and come to find out that the franchisor is a thief, uh, is a Robin Hood, um, I won't give you all the details, but let's just say I will be spending the rest of my life in jail. Like, there's no way in, there's no way, no. You don't walk away or you don't say, oops, 300,000 down. A no, I don't play about that. All right, let's go to New story. York, Atlanta, Miami to Phoenix. To us, it was sold as a great opportunity. That was until it was time for these investors to get a cut of their store earnings. The money is gone. The CEO in boiling hot water accused of not only stealing money from people, but targeting black women entrepreneurs in the process, and now authorities are getting involved. I'm Justin Carter. This is TSR Investigates. All right, look, 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 oh, whoa. This man has purposely targeted black females. Do he feel as though that these black females were considered soft targets? It, it 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 blows my mind. Why do people like? Do you feel as though black people is like, or the people that he targeted was uneducated, gullible? Where did this mindset? Where did this come from? Do because if he if he would have done that to any other race, I would tell you right now. There'd have been a class action lawsuit. There'd have been so much stuff going down. Why did he feel so comfortable with pulling this kind of stunt specifically on black people? I don't. All right. I got to I got to watch, too. I got to watch, too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. y'all. I'm just wow. It's crazy. The concept seemed promising, a seafood franchise with urban flair. That is how the BK Lobster franchise, named after its roots in Brooklyn, it took off in New York and beyond and in the thick of the pandemic. As for the CEO, Rodney Bonds, his goal has always been to grow the business by franchising to Black entrepreneurs. But for months, the shade room has been getting emails, phone calls, and messages saying that the CEO tricked them into fraudulent deals and contracts. And the proof really isn't hard to find. Store after store after store permanently shuttered. So we started looking through the receipts ourselves. Now we launched in 2019. After only being open five months, a pandemic hit. But to our surprise, BK Lobster has proven itself to be a pandemic proof business. That was the pitch about two years ago. BK Lobster CEO Rodney Bonds and then COO Edward Williams boasting about their business, home of the viral 100 karat gold infused lobster roll. We actually show you how to get involved. I swear, if I see another mother effing gold wrapped anything, I'm going to lose my top this is crazy but but looking behind him it look official i i could see how the average person could be fooled uh bk so brooklyn okay brooklyn lobster 
Uh, the look of the restaurant is well thought out. Placements. You know, you got the stack of chips on the side uh, next to the counter. I don't know if that's a digital menu board, but the looks of it is very clean. It looked like a, it could have been a, a great concept, man. Sucks. In your business. It's what got Dara Bradley at first. I did an initial investment of 46000 For the Astoria location in Queens, New York, she says that she invested in May 2021 along with several others. He painted, he bought flat screens, he bought some chairs. That's all he did. He was telling me he was paying rent for eight months, okay? Eight months paying rent saying that the liquor license, we're waiting for the liquor license, we're waiting for the liquor license. And then that was the first red flag. The rent is 9000 <laughs> Oh my God. Hey, I'm not laughing at her. It, it sucks. It sucks. I'm not laughing at her. I'm just really laughing because you have a lot of people that, that come up with the money, that got the money to get into the business. And it's unfortunate that they get, you know, taken advantage of. Look, if you give somebody 45000 50000 for a restaurant concept, such as lobsters, and I see you got chicken nuggets and chicken wings. Look, when it comes to food costs, lobsters, uh, shellfish alone you got to bring the money because shellfish of any type will run your food costs through the moon and back so when you're looking at forty five thousand dollars for what like tables and he's paying a rent with it i mean you're not forty five thousand is only like if you shoe screen budget it probably three months of actual operations if that you know what i mean like if your 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 food cost is like spot on um yeah that would have been my major for but obviously i got 12 years in the hospitality industry had my own restaurant all that stuff before so i know the the red flags i know the indicators you're supposed to be looking at um but unfortunately for her Ooh, Jesus. Ooh, that hurts. In a month on Astoria. And he collected, I found out, almost over 200000 on my location. Rent was never paid. So she started asking questions and got the New York Attorney General's office involved. The chief accountant, Margaret Curta, writing in this email back in 2022, quote, that BK Lobster is not now and never was registered to sell franchises within or from the state of New York, end quote. Oh, oh my God, how, how did you not catch that? That is crazy. When you, when you go from a regular business, you may have a few locations or whatever, but a lot of people don't know this. You can start a regular business, but if you want to franchise, you got to get your business registered in every state that you're offering uh, your franchise in. It has to be registered. Franchising your business is a very costly experience uh, for, for you as the business owner. And there's ways that you can obviously check out if the franchise or is official or not. And it all starts with your um, your state department. So you could look in uh, wherever you actually. You know what? Even better, you could even yeah look at your state where you where you go and get your LCs and stuff done. Uh, there's a department in there that you could verify cross reference if this business is actually registered in that particular state as a franchisor. You got to do, do your due diligence, y'all. This is nothing to be played with because once that money's forked over, you can even sue the uh, franchisor, but you might as well count that money gone. He said I, I, he couldn't give me my man, money back through the tax complications. I'm like, what kind of tax complications are you talking about? You never gave me anything for my taxes. 
that's when I went off on him. And later filing this lawsuit, accusing the company of failing to comply with the New York Franchise Sales Act and, quote, intentionally stealing Dara's money despite claiming Dara would own a piece or percentage of the BK Lobster Astoria store and refusing to return it. This is getting out of control. It's been the same story for about a half dozen people who've been reaching out to the shade room about this for months. Terrence Dixon gave $10,000 to open up the first BK Lobster in Miramar, Florida. They are... Uh, uh, excuse me? <laughs> okay. This is wild, y'all. Look, you can't even... Like, how, how are you going to spend $10,000 to open up a restaurant to, to even, it's not a Chick-fil-A. Like, how are, how, what, where, look, this is crazy work. Is this like a partnership deal opposed to, are they putting up like, we're a franchise, but you could buy into the partnership deal like that's not even logical that's not even making legal sense you can't even do that why are they fronting like they're giving out franchises when it sounds like a license deal i just don't oh my god this this thing is going to make me go crazy i already know it i already know it essentially just made up whatever numbers they wanted and offered a percentage um based on whatever the dollar amount is Dixon says that he was contracted to get 7% of the store sales. So there was no real formula as far as calculating. Any People, I'm like, yo, look, you got to be smart. You got to be smart. You got to do your due diligence. You could have conversations with people. And they could be wolves in sheep clothing, apparently. But look, if it sounds like it is off, if you get that fuzzy feeling somewhere down here in your underbelly about an opportunity, if it sounds too good to be true, y'all, please listen to that inner voice. You got to, I call it your guardian angel looking out for you. Listen. There's been multiple times in my youth where I did not listen to that guardian angel or you call it the inner voice or whatever. And lo and behold, some like crazy work happened. And thank God I was able to survive those three accounts. But it, it puts you into this kind of thing like, man, I should be listening to that inner thing. If they're talking to people. And they're like, look, we're giving out these franchises or, or I guess they told that one lady it's a franchise and they're telling this guy, hey, you could you could buy in uh, at 7 percent profit. Um, it only going to cost you 10,000. What's the contract looking like? Did you read the contract? More importantly, did you have a lawyer? That specialize in uh, business or corporate law, look at the contract. Or did you just go in and just like, hey, these these guys look like me. We're all black. We're we're this is a come up. This is my opportunity. Yo, I'm about to go in on this opportunity. And then you put your money into this thing. Man, y'all, this is this is crazy to me. Anything, it was just a, basically a bunch of made-up numbers. Which was the second red flag. Dixon filing this civil complaint accusing Rodney Bonds and his associates of breaching their contract, fraud, and failure to return money. He can't dispute the fact that he's not authorized to sell franchises, which he did. He can't dispute the fact that he didn't follow his own contract that he's given to everyone. And we checked a number of contracts that former franchisees signed, which are pretty similar in nature, promising to maintain proper fiscal records and give members the right to access, quote, true and full. And <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Ooh, look, y'all, I'm just. Is it kind of a listen full name? 
Look, I, I was looking over the uh, the contracts just now, and honestly, I need, I'm not even going to hold y'all. This this danky joint looked like it came from Rocket Lawyer. <laughs> it's one of those contracts, y'all, that look like it came fresh off the press from RocketLawyers.com. This don't look like no legitimate the inspection of books and records. Diabolical word. Information regarding the status of business and financial condition of the company. Completely lost my $100,000. Shauna Edwards says that she got none of that when her store opened originally back in summer 2021 in Brooklyn. I was told um, since it's open, it's already a cash cow. You know, you'll get paid, you know, every quarter starting from when you invested. OK, this is what I'm told. October came. Oh my What's going God. on? I'm not seeing reports. I'm calling him like every day, three or four times a day, because now I'm feeling, you know, like I got got. So. A hundred thousand dollars. I could only imagine how long it took her living in New York. To come up with an additional hundred thousand dollars in savings outside of the living cost she has to naturally go through by living in New York. And she's saying she's calling him three to four times. Look, I coming over this ain't no phone call kind of conversation i'm coming over i'm knocking on your doors wherever you are i'm i'm monitoring your social media i'm hiring a pi we're gonna find you and we're gonna have this talk this ain't no phone call conversation i'm gonna find you you will become my mission I'm telling you, a hundred thousand. Look, y'all, the judge is gonna look at me square in my eyes. 25 to life. Because of your situation, I'm gonna grant you a parole option. <laughs> oh my god. Uh November 16th, I believe, he sent me three thousand six hundred and nineteen dollars, right? But no financials. No reports. Ron Coulter signed a contract as a franchisee for that same store. How much How much have you gotten um, in return? Me, Mr. Carter? Yeah. None. None. Zero. And, and I've lost in total upward of $300,000. And, and when 20 people came to me and started talking to me about how, many, how much percent they owe, I said, well, 100% is only 100%. You only sell 100% of 100% of a business. <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta breathe for this. They 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 pre-sold an existing franchise alleged location that they just got some other female for a hundred thousand. They they pre-sold that same location to this guy. Where hold on, where are people coming up with the money for all of this? Three hundred thousand. Oh my God, yo! I swear I'll fucking put out a hit. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't curse. Oh, I will, man. That's that's hit money, right? Oh my, look, that's crazy. So we're above 100. percent We're at 200 percent of 100 percent business being sold. Julie Genty says she never got any of that when she signed her deal to own a location in Jamaica, Queens. Over 150 grand to 200 thousand in the hole. She knew right away. Something wasn't right. And on top of that, he opened up another lobster location literally a mile away, which is walking distance <laughs> from where my location was at. And if anyone knows, lobster is not is very expensive. Pause. Look. They opened up. A <laughs> I'm not laughing at them. I'm not. This is this sucks. It sucks. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold 
they open up another location or the same block just a mile up the audacity of that that goes against every franchise code out there look when you're dealing with a franchise at minimum your protected area is five miles so you take your location and you draw a circle some conference around that dot which represents your location to five miles out at minimum i've seen some franchisors even go as far as 10 miles out but yo a mile up the street are you this is some serious work y'all and you know what look i'm I'm gonna put it out their their name bk lobster because it comes from new york i love it the name is is fitting uh their their menu from the video clips that was shown it was fitting i loved it. it it's a beautiful concept it's easy to cook shellfish lobsters and all this stuff it's easy to to do to, to the, the the chicken nuggets from what i've seen previously it's easy that's that's brainless work they had a real they had a, like I, what what kills me is that you had an actual real location it was working you had a working concept people was rocking with your concept you had real people with real money that could have honestly buy legitimately into your concept but you had to do a shady slimy deal is it's it's mind-boggling to me why would people be in position to grow kill their future everything was straight you could this, this these these two franchise or, or they can't even call it a franchise not even a franchise these two ceos of bk lobster they had everything in place to run a legitimate business and they wasn't franchised ready grant that they could have done a license deal but that's another topic for another video look they had everything in place they could have even taken on these people as investors into the, the the brand directly and been legitimized throughout the entire process and brought these investors on as silent partners and then take that three hundred thousand that one hundred thousand that hundred fifty thousand that forty five thousand that ten thousand and grown you know at least two more locations sad man sad the shame on these black guys man soulless soulless so nobody is looking for two lobster places within a mile vicinity and that's exactly what he did it's not bad business it's literally a ponzi scheme rodney bonds thinks otherwise in an article published by the city news in new york he did say that he didn't quite understand new york's franchise laws and is in the process of addressing those franchise violations don't even want to hear it don't even want to hear it you're not going to franchise a business by yourself you are not a franchise lawyer of course you don't know what's going on doofus one and idiot two but of course i believe they always known off of their first location that they were in the scheming business the ponzi scheme business i think they always knew that i think that was probably their plan from the start 
I, I, that's what I believe. It's, it's just, it's, it's diabolical, y'all. It's crazy work. It's quote that my lawyers informed me on the registration states and non-registration states. They say that, well, the ones that you do sell, we have to then tell the AG's office that you did sell them and then we'll have to rectify, remedy that, which they did. So we're in the process of that, end quote. Bonds went on to tell the city, quote, that I was trying to help mold these people into an opportunity, give them an opportunity to do stuff, but they were opportunistic and they just wanted to take advantage of, you know, the situation. That is a lie from the pit of hell. It's actually, obviously, the reverse. These two guys were the opportunity the opportunistic people. They wanted to take advantage of anybody they could find. And unfortunately, they targeted the black community because unlike our other counterparts, they probably felt as though the education level for African-Americans like themselves is not really where it needs to be. So they they I'm I'm quite sure they probably have filtered dozens and dozens of people and connected themselves with the ones that they feel as though again is called soft targeting. And they're like, hey, they don't understand, they've never been in the restaurant industry, they don't know what to look out for, but they do have the money. Hey, bro, I think we could get her. I think we could get him. Sell sell the story, bro. Come on, let's go. Let's get him. And I'm quite sure they have probably talked to actual operators, meaning people in the hospitality industry that know that know what they know. And like, nah, nah, they they know too much, dog. Ah, nah, let's let's move on to somebody else. It had to be a setup like that because this this is crazy to even say that they had a lawyer to, to do all of this, that's a lie in itself. That's a lie. They're trying to cover their tracks. Situations take advantage of when the getting was good. I am focused on the quality of the relationship now and working with experienced individuals. I've learned my lesson of trying to help people who are just opportunists, end quote. He also said that he fired Ed Williams as COO over bad business practices and poor treatment of employees. But Williams fired back in the city article saying that, quote, he didn't think Bonds intentionally set out to scam people, but thinks that Rodney had his own version of reality of the truth of facts, end quote. We also reached out to both Bonds and Edwards for a comment ourselves. We're still waiting to hear back. But if you do feel like you've fallen victim to a scam, your best bet is to reach out to your attorney general's office so that they can guide you on how to report something like this. We have confirmed that the state attorney general's office in New York is investigating. And of course, as soon as we learn more, we'll pass it along to you. For TSR Investigates, I'm Justin Carter. Justin Carter, thank you for what you did. Look, I ain't calling no lawyer. <laughs> that's just my personal thing, and that's how I handle situations. Um, you could look at handling stuff like this at your own accord, but when when you're talking about a hundred thousand plus to to the average person, look, that's a strong blow. That's a blow that a majority of the average people cannot rebound from. It's not like you're a, a, a millionaire or multimillionaire and you you lose 10% of your funds if you're a, a millionaire, right? It, you, you still got a couple hundred thousand left of your bank that you can make your rebound and invest in other things. And then you could get your lawyers and legally pursue this, this situation. But if you're an average person, let's say like that that a uh, female, you know, uh, she she spent you know a hundred thousand, right? Or the other guy that spent three hundred thousand, they could have worked their entire lifetime saving up that money. Can you imagine being in their shoes? Can you imagine working your entire life 
you're you're 40 45 years old ever since you could remember when you got your job you've been like yo i'm going to save for something that i can invest in in the future and you spent two three decades worth of saving living beneath your means you you've been eating eating crap just saving not going on no trips none of that stuff because you knew one day i'm gonna put my money my hard-earned savings into something and into an investment vehicle that's that's going to bring in the returns that's going to alleviate me from going to my uh joe blow nine to five and now i can start to live life to the fullest but what you put your money into was a scam and then these buffoons one and idiot two is running off with your money living life up to their fullest and then you're just left in the dust i'm not calling no lawyers I'm not calling the police i'm knocking on your door and i'm gonna put that work in but that's me that's just me i'm not promoting none of that kind of stuff but i'm just saying this this is diabolical work i wish all of them uh a speedy recovery financially i hope that they come to a legal resolution um and i hope that they could actually bounce back financially because this is crazy and there's a lot of scams out there that's tripping people up so you know for people out there when you're looking at these different type of opportunities make sure you do your own due diligence uh pending the opportunity make sure you link with somebody that you can trust in your community to cross reference and verify don't take it upon yourself to to jump into stuff just because it sounds good you got to do your homework and if it sounds too good to be true 10 times out of 10 it is y'all all right chef prime out y'all thank you